Now, down. where is he? Should be here. He's just doing this to wind us up, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, Exford. Pretty, pretty got the Tesco delivery. Yeah. Oh, he said he'd organise his Tesco delivery. For the, he, he wants to know what time we were on so he could organise his Tesco delivery. <laughs> Brilliant. He probably would as well. Hello, Graham. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Air we're hug. Totally fucked off. How are yeah. you? Oh, we're, we're grumpy old fuckers tonight, Graham. It's a good start. Hi. I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. <laughs> How are things going at the practice? Yeah, no, no, actually no change in anything since I spoke to you last, but I think things are pretty steady. Everything's been done outdoors. We've managed to survive like an outdoor Scottish winter as consulting. Um, still no clients in buildings. You've been through a Scottish winter consulting outdoors? Respect, respect. That, that is, that's amazing. That's it's not, absolutely not. Hard enough with the sun in English winter. You know, sometimes it got down to about eight or nine degrees centigrade. It was pretty well, chilly. Overnight. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it took 16 at one point during the day. And there was a hell of a lot of drizzle one day. There was. Mm. I remember that because I, I was taking the dog out for a walk and I got damp. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I had to wipe my head when I got back into the practice. So a Scottish winter, God. <laughs> Did, have you have you allowed them in at all since uh, we last spoke? Or we had, I think, probably mid to late summer, September. We let them in for a little bit, and then we've allowed one person in for even ages, and that's that's the limit, really. Yeah. So yeah, it's been brutal, but the guys have done all right. It's like outdoor consulting all winter's not actually been that bad. It's miserable, but yeah, you could get just get on with it. And, Quick wind down when you get in. You need some little windscreen wipers on your shield so you can see what you're doing. But yeah. It's, yeah, there is still that little bit of novelty to it, isn't there? A little bit, but uh, oh ah, it's not too bad. So, what, about, what about you guys? What are you doing? Yeah, same, same thing. We're not allowing anyone in. You should think you grab the dog from them, running away, shouting, dirty, dirty, wash yourselves, you brothers. And then you uh, just take the dog in. It's awkward, isn't it? Because you go in and you think, oh, I forgot to ask them this. And so you go back out. Do you mind if I do this? Yeah, okay. Well, you phone them. And we've got very poor signal in the car park. Mm -hmm. So the phone call goes something like, so I'm just examining, and I think cancer. But they say, what? What? Like, no, there's no sign of, and, and a uh, hundred pounds. What? What? No, 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 no. I, I said he weighs less than a hundred pounds, which is good, but pounds for the treatment. What? They then say, "Why are you talking into your fingers? I'm only three feet away from you across the car park." Is it's, it's force of habit. So, <laughs> but no, it's it's um, it's going okay. It's I think we're all a little bit tired of coronavirus by now. If I'm honest, if someone said tomorrow the pandemic's over, then I don't think any of us would be too upset. Oh yeah, yeah, and we're Mike. Oh my, Mike Either. is almost a vaccinator. I'm almost, like, almost a vaccinator. He looks like Bronson. What? <laughs> he looks like Bronson. Bronson. Yeah, yeah. Well, Do you I'm, mean the serial killer or the uh, or the actor? Uh, I think the serial killer probably fits the bill better. I thought the serial killer. Yes, he does. Actually, doesn't he? <laughs> I was thinking if when I get my final pass out and we get we get the the first shift, I thought I'll, I'll do a little um, do a thing, you know, the vaccinator, and I'll I'll, I'll put just a photograph with some doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, <laughs> sort of Terminatory style music in the background. Yeah, yeah. So so anyone who comes to see you, we'll, we'll look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down and relax. <laughs> I'll this be will, back. This will only hurt a little bit. <laughs> I want to know, Graham, whether it was you that I read about in the newspaper the other day. Uh, don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. It's a worry, isn't it? <laughs> I'm slightly concerned. <laughs> sure you do. It isn't the whole sofa thing, is it? Yeah. No, it wasn't me. Wasn't it you? No, I wasn't guilty. I didn't. I didn't trap the cat. So, 
Well, we, you saved the cat. What 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 happened? A cat here? trapped in a sofa. Yeah. Yeah. This is it seems to be a thing. There's an emerging trend in cats being trapped in sofas. And and people, but we'll not go not we'll not touch that. That's that's it. But yeah, cats being trapped in sofas. <laughs> I'm just, you've, got, you've got him all. You've got him all on tenter hooks here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm have seen, you, seen one of these? Trapped in a sofa. Have you not seen what? one of these? There's a global epidemic of cats being trapped in sofas. Okay, so my, my wife's uh, grandmother, a few right. years back, at the grand old age of eighty-five, sat down on a sofa on a cat, right. and we said she was quite deaf. We, we said, get, get, "Get up, get up, hey, eh? get up." Hmm? Get up, you're on the cat. I can't see it. No, you can't see the cat because you're on it. Huh? Get get up. You're sitting on a cat. I'm sitting on a get to so be pulled her up. And this cat was. <sighs> oh. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fine. I don't know there was a testament to um to, to the resilience of the cat, the softness of the sofa. Or the squidgeness of her po- I, no I won't go in anyway it, it was fine it was absolutely fine so tell me about this cat stuck in a sofa well it's this trend for having these sofas that recline for people that are lazy and they can't move their legs so as you recline it the cat's underneath Thanks having a nice order little for the reclining sofa darling <laughs> sorry Graham you were saying <laughs> And then they just get themselves trapped inside the mechanism somehow. I don't quite know how they do it, but yeah, basically the good. mechanism goes, cat gets tangled in it. I know exactly how they do it. Seems to be, it seems to be tails that seems to be the issue. Ooh. I know exactly and, how yeah, they do it. Right, I'm blown. So the fire brigade had to cut one free. Um, but the, I think the one that we saw, I think we had to anaesthetise it or sedate it in the property and then just like literally chop it off and then drive back to the practice and stitch up what was left. Oh gosh! Exactly what happened. Yeah, like what, so what happens is, guys, is that there's a there's a spiral winding shaft runs along the back of the sofa. Yeah, and then the reclining bits lock onto that. So when you recline it, that shaft spins. Oh, it winds. It winds up. It winds. Yeah. It winds. So it'll wind the components in and out. So what happens is, is the cat snuggles down into the bottom of the sofa, which yes. the, the upright and the, the level, and their tail often will go down between the cushions. <sighs> then when you hit wind, the winding mechanism picks up, which has got grease on it, picks up on the hair of the tail and drags the tail into the winding mechanism. Ow. Ow. Okay, so anyone Ow. watching or listening, yeah, please don't don't be lazy bastards. Just get a an ordinary sofa and occasionally stretch out on it, or do some calisthenics or something. But don't get these well, buy one of those killing ones. Buy buy a poo a thing. Yeah, what do you call it? Yeah, a poo. Be, yeah. A beanbag. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beanbag is great. Or a Manx cat. Oh. <laughs> no, don't, don't get a Manx cat. Why? Don't get a, because Manx cats have other congenital problems often associated with them, and they can get terrible problems with um, with faecal incontinence, urinary incontinence, uh, stump pain. So that they, they have these um, uh, vertebral malformations around the end of the lumbar sacral region that, that can cause chronic pelvic, pubic, and lumbar pain. So don't get a Manx cat, please. So are Manx cats actually born with no tails? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's a recessive genetic uh, mutation. It's they are... quite a small island, isn't it? There's quite a lot of um, <laughs> close relationships amongst the cat population anyway. <laughs> Other the small islands are available, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other incestuous relationships are available. We, we started all of this, as you know, you were one of the first guests. It was mm-hmm. sort of a case of three guys getting together and having a laugh, mm. you know, getting getting pissed and having a good time and just just rambling about stuff, life, <laughs> life, the universe, veterinary medicine, 
everything. I don't know. Do you want a drink, guys? Yeah, oh, no, mind. yeah my, my glass is, uh, is empty. It's empty. You've got an empty glass. You've got an empty glass there, Graham. I do. I've all set up. I've got everything you sent me. Wicked. Although, um, I've got to ask, those tubes look a bit used. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you've sent us... You sent us wee wee samples, Mike. No. What? Well, yeah. And what? Uh, this is it. So that one. Yeah. That one does not look pretty. No. That's hemat. That's hematuria. So this yeah, is, I was going to say this, this there's is a lot of blood in there, isn't there? In, in the urine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or they? I, I had it upright for about an hour, and nothing settled. So I think it could be hemoglobin urea, or um, uh, possibly even uh, myoglobin urea. So is it from a racing greyhound? Mike? No. No. Uh, you missed one different, Sean. Huh? Could be beetroot toxicity. It could be. It could be. Yes. And this is... It's all like that, right? This one here is certainly uh, hyposthenuric. This is under-concentrated. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking either psychogenic polydipsia or it could be diabetes insipidus. And the other and one? This one? This one looks fairly normal. I'm not sure actually whether it was one of mine or, or is it Gwyneth Paltrow? <laughs> Monsieur, with this urine, you're really spoiling us. Huh? Yeah, there we go. Well, they're all gin. No, surely not. They are all gin. Which one do you fancy How? going with first? That is a gin. Gin. So our, our listeners, are completely mystified by this, but um, what what we have here, Mike has very kindly sent us three pots, urine sample pots containing varying shades of liquid. One is one is a totally clear liquid, the other is uh, a straw coloured uh, liquid, and the the other is. Uh, a slightly red tinge. It looks a bit like uh, a Lapsan Souchong tea that no one's put milk in yet. Or, let's face it, they both look like wee wee, but one of them has a bit of blood in it or bee tree. So, uh, but they're gin. They are gin. They are all gin. So, what, why, don't, why don't you start with the um, with the bloody one? Let's start with the bloody. Okay. Just just for the sheer hell of it, just crack that. Have you got a glass with some ice in it? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't have ice. You don't have ice? Okay, not a problem at all. Yeah. Just go with it. Sorry, right. it's cold anyway. Oh, it's in Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, hold the hold the glass outside the window for a second. It, it's, it's like cough, cough mixture. <laughs> it's Ben Lynn. Is it Ben Lynn? Are, are, are the, are the cough mixtures <laughs> are available? Are the no, no, none of them actually soup, work. None of them work, but they're yeah. all available. This is some... Um, So there is it. There is a fruit there, isn't there? There is a fruit in that, yeah. I mean, is it black it's currant or? It's not far off that actually. Blackberry? No. Lingonberry? No. Does it end in berry? No, berry. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, currant. It doesn't. Currant is getting even closer. Sultana. Close. Raisin. <laughs> You can either shut up and I'll tell you, or you can... Can I shut up? I'm going to shut up. <laughs> so what flavours are you getting out of that, then? I'm going to... Ben Lynn. Ben Lynn. Well, listen, you gave me... You you sent me a whiskey that tasted like formaldehyde. That so, is true. I can't place it. It's very weird. So body preservative. It, it is very peculiar, this one. And um, I, I thought... Is it something like wild and foraged? It, it's not actually. It, it's more. It's more cultivated than that. Mm. Significantly more cultivated than that. And I, th I think the, the important thing is is to, is to consider how gins, what gin is, and how it's made. Mm. And, and gin, of course, is is made out of a base spirit. And the thing that makes it gin or gives it that Geneva or gin label is the juniper berry. So, raw spirit with mm -hmm. a juniper berry flavoring and then everything else adds on top of that particular flavoring so there are various ways that you can do that one way 
is to distill your raw spirit through botanicals. So you either boil the botanicals in the, in the spirit and take the, the top layers off and let them distill out into, into or fractionate out into, into your drink, or um, some distilleries will put those botanicals in a basket so the, the, the distillate will go from the fluid as a vapor through those botanicals, picking up the flavors and then um, separate out. Or you can seep the flavoring in the gin mm -hmm. and, and leave it to soak. And that's what they've done with this particular gin. So, this, so that's, that's what you tend to do with a slew gin or something like that, once exactly, you've got a base gin. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the same style and same technique. And this, um, this particular one comes from the Yarra Valley in Australia, which is the home of one of the world's most terrific wines, the number two Shiraz. <gasps> oh, oh, I like that. Okay. I so indeed. Okay. So where do you think this has come from then? Grapes. Yeah. These are I want a prize. These are Shiraz grapes steeped in gin for eight weeks before being pressed to release the ginny juice full of colour and natural delicious sweetness. Drink it young and fresh with lemon tonic or bitter lemon or just enjoy it as it develops over time. And that's, uh, that's a Four Pillars gin from Australia. So from the wine lands of Australia. So that's a Four Pillars bloody Shiraz gin. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, there aren't many gin. I mean, I, I, do, I do like gin. Or I, I, put this way, I love gin and tonic, or I love a gin in a Negroni. There aren't many gins I have neat. Yeah. And th this is going down amazingly well, Lee, isn't it? Mm. It's like a digestif, isn't it? It's yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's the sipping. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much so. Very mm. much so. So, go on then. Are you going to neck that down? Uh, near enough, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a shame to, doesn't it? Go on then. <laughs> you can have some more, Julian, next time I see you. All right. You ready for the next one then? Yep. I might take the I'm going to take glasses. Go on then. It, I mean, these are, this isn't proper proper connoisseur stuff, but uh, changing glasses would work. Why don't you go for the um, the proper concentrated urine one? I, oh, no, I've rich... got it the wrong way round, haven't I? I'm supposed to get you drunk before I give you the urine. <laughs> Damn. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a sip of tonic just yeah, to... Do um, yeah, do that. Just to rinse it out. Do that. I That's... realised I haven't got a bottle opener with me, but... I have got a fairly sharp edge to the laminate table here. No, so let's, no, here we go. No, 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 no. So we've got the urine sample now. You've got the urine sample now. That's straw coloured, straw coloured liquid. A friend of mine went to St Mary's Medical School uh, about 30 years ago. And he told me that uh, one of the, one of the lecturers there was an old school lecturer. And he said um, on, on the first day, he said, what I want you to do as a medical student is to start developing all your senses. So that's observational senses, smell and taste, very important. And he said, you may be in a situation one day where you do not have any testing kit. Does this patient have diabetes? Now, urine, unless the patient is symptomatic, urine is sterile. So here we go. Sugar. That is diabetes. And he passed it round and everyone. Yeah, yeah. Target, yeah. And he said, now, remember I said observational skills are important. And I dipped that finger in and licked that finger. <laughs> you, you can now all go and wash your fingers and rinse your mouths out if you want, but it's a very important lesson for you. <laughs> That's excellent. Go on then, Julian. <laughs> right. I'm gonna... Carry uh, on your observational skills with this one. Poor my ear, it still looks like wee wee. Yeah, it still looks like wee wee. That is not good. What? Oh, God. The taste. I think urine might be better. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, have you actually had a sip yet, Graham? 
Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Have you? I haven't had a taste yet, but the smell... Don't it, do it. It, it almost smells like gauze bushes. Like washing powder. If you don't like it, don't drink it, Graham. Now, that's that's unusual, isn't it? That So this is, whereas the last one was um, was Benlin. Yeah. This is this is Dettol, I think, isn't it? Very it's floral. Dettol, it is it is floral. It, it does taste like gorse flowers. Yeah. Are you picking anything else up out there? Do you get, do you get the licorice bite at the back? The back yeah, end? definitely licorice. There yeah. is really, yeah. into, that's it. I was trying to work out what it was. And it, it's a really deep, almost a sort of charcoal-y flavour. Graham does not like this at all, does he? <laughs> I think it might be better with tonic. Let's, let's pop a drop of tonic in and let's see what, how that actually goes. Okay. Putting putting the tonic in there, for me, has just eliminated the top notes and all I've got left yep. is licorice. Yeah, me, me, too. me too. I preferred it without the tonic. I hate licorice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that might be why you don't like this one. <laughs> Fair oh. let, well, let, let's have, don't drink any more, Graham. It's not, it's not a big deal, seriously. Um, this this particular one again relies on the the seeping method to to develop the flavour. So mm. this again is a raw spirit um, seeped with juniper berries, probably for a few days, mm -hmm. and then the the additives are coriander. Coriander, yeah. You get that? You got that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like if you ever bite a whole, they just bite the coriander seeds. Yep. It's, it's that sort of flavour. Mm. Yeah, coriander, um, cardamom, and citrus. Mm -hmm. So that will have had the zest of an orange and the zest of a lemon put into there, yeah. just to seep it through. And that's to a certain extent. It's the juniper berries that's given it the yellow colour, mm -hmm. and then the other flavours have combined to give you that licorice aftertaste. With the yeah. coriander and that. Now you've mentioned cardamom, I can taste it. Yeah. Really, that's where that washing, the washing powder flavour comes from. It's, if you've ever sort of, act like, I remember when we were kids, my mum always used to like make rice and she put cardamom seeds in thinking it was posh. And um, you can guarantee one poor bugger would get a whole cardamom seed and chew on it. And it was just the most horrific thing. And that's that, that brings that memory back. It does. It. Do you know, I, I actually, I, I love you cardamom. you liked curry. I do, but not cardamom seeds when they're whole. As a glass of interest, it's great. I wouldn't sit down on a summer evening and think, mm, wonderful, I'm going to swig through this. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, this, this one comes in slightly heavier. This, this is about 42%, this particular one. Mm -hmm. And it took me about two weeks to make it. You made it? Yeah. Wow. And is that the same thing? That's like a bathtub gin, you've just done it as a compounded thing and put it all in together and leave it for a bit? Yeah. So like you'd make a slow gin where you, you get mm. your gin and then you pour all your slows in, leave it for a few weeks and then drain them out. That's exactly how that was done. So the juniper stayed in there for about four days. Mm. Um, and then the other spices and, and herbs all went in just to see what came out at the end. And, uh, and what, what's your base spirit? Base spirit was uh, Polish vodka. Uh -huh. Right. So uh, that's actually a very easy way to make a gin. What I find interesting is that the, the things like the cardamom um, and the coriander really only come out when you know they're there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's no licorice in that. So where's Weird. the licorice flavour come from? That, that's, that's odd. When you told me licorice, I really recognised that licorice yeah. flavour. And, and, I, and I'm still convinced in my mind that there's, but you can taste the bark of licorice within that. I, I just made it up as I went along. I just thought, let's, I'd, I'd looked at a couple of commercial gins that I quite like mm. and tr and sort of, what would you say, drew inspiration from, mm. but I couldn't get all of the botanicals and the, the gins that I particularly like generally aren't made by seeping. They're made by distilling through the, the yeah. botanicals, which obviously is picking up different oils and, and flavours from from the botanicals rather than just soaking them in the alcohol. So um, that's just an interesting experiment. Good fun. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try making some. I wonder whether we should make a Thai one. 
for a Thai meal. You could have kefir lime yeah. leaves. Yeah. Lemongrass. Lemongrass. Yeah. Yeah. You could try that. Ooh. Lay leaves in or, it. Or a Rogan Josh one for a vintage. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't make a bad. With, with curry leaves. With curry leaves, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, you could do. You could do. Um, to, actually, a turmeric one would be nice. Mm hmm. And probably very good for you. Probably very yellow. Mm. Very yellow, but the, the anti-inflammatory effects of, uh, of turmeric would um, almost certainly make it a health drink. Almost certainly. Come on, let's <laughs> let's get this done. Let's get this. Let's get the, the water out of the way. Let's get. So this is, this last one is is ice high piece the nuric urine. Yes. This and that's urine. It's the super dilute. Clear crystal white. And it and it's. <laughs> I'll be honest, it smells like surgical spirits. <laughs> but this is this is something you wipe the site down with before you operate. You do. That's that's absolutely correct. No, it's not that. It smells burning. Whoa. Oh. It smells quite alcoholic. Yeah, I've I've got I've got liquid pouring out of my eyes. <laughs> Did you have a sip? I had a sip. And? It's um, it's a sort of alcoholic wasabi, isn't it, really? <laughs> Graham? It's certainly alcoholic, but it doesn't taste as much. It's, it's just base spirit. It's not much, there's not much taste to it. This is, this is going to be good fun. Go on. I'm getting the flavour of, um, of surgical spirits with a, okay. with a hint of methylated spirits. This is, this is brilliant. This is, this is really amusing. Right, so, it's got like a it's got a kind of vegetable thing to it. One of the problems that we've got here is I've given you two quite flavoursome gins. Mm -hmm. and this one mm -hmm. is a lot more subtle. So what what I'm what I'm going to suggest you do is is take your orange and your vegetable peeler, carve a strip of zest off, and then I'm just going to put the put the oil around the edge of the glass, and I'm going to chunk that into the into the spirit. Oh wow! So is that modifying things? That's peppery and oily. It's not a, 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 a tiny bit of citrus, but but hardly any of that. It's got a real oily flavour to it. Mm. Smoky, smoky flavour. It's more potent. Definitely, it tastes more like more of alcohol now. Right, but it is smoother. I mean, for example, look, look. No oh, you're coming out of my you've eyes anymore. Crying. You've stopped crying, yeah. Julian. That's amazing. Trick, trick number two with this one mm -hmm. is just put a few drops of orange in there. Can you give us a clue as to what strength this is? Because my lips have gone numb. Your lips have gone numb. All will be revealed in a moment. I'm Maybe having like a stroke. 60% plus. You, you're not far off, actually, Graham. The lips go numb after about 57%, don't they? Gosh, now that's changed it as well. That's given it almost a jasmine flavour, jasmine tea flavour. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Graham? My palate's gone. Everything seems numb now. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm, I'm just going to pop a drop of tonic in there just to be just to be decent because it's 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 not necessarily healthy to to be whacking back. Uh, large quantities. I've just put a little drop in there just to take the edge off it. Okay. One of, one, of the, one of the key botanicals in this one is Angelica. Ah, yeah. We used to use Angelica years ago for making um, the marzipan fruits. Yep. And you use mm -hmm. Angelica as the stalk, wouldn't you, for, for yep. the fruit? Yeah. And yes, it does. It has that. Vaguely flat flavour. It's a smooth flavour, isn't it, Angelica? Almost a gelatin type yeah. consistency. Well, I feel it is. I mean, just my my experiments with this is that you can bring out a lot of flavours and a lot of citrus flavours with that with that orange zest and the the orange. Mm. Uh, just a few drops of orange there. Now you're absolutely right. This one comes in at fifty seven percent. Mm -hmm. That's less than I thought. Ah, there we go. And and this this one actually is distilled in Scotland. Is it? Ah, and and the other great reason for really really enjoying this 
Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a twist on this, Graham, and and you you'll you'll have, you won't have been a party to any of this. Um, and Julian's going to get all upset in a second because because <laughs> this one is Kirkova, Archangel, Storm Strength Gin from the Orkneys. No, really. <laughs> I am. Where's my feet? Huh? One of my two favourite new gins of this year. <laughs> there's the Kirkivar, and there's the other one, that seaweed one. Yeah, that you got the Harris. The, the Harris, Harris which oh. Harris gin, and both the Kirkivar and the Harris gin. Oh, it's just the most so, amazing. So I wouldn't have gone far wrong if I'd sent you both Harris, then would I? Oh, I love it. Absolutely do, love do it. Do you? Incredible, oh, isn't it? I'm sorry, guys. I could have, I could have sent you that. I, I I was looking at it and I was thinking, where do I t where do I take the guys on this one? So, uh -huh. so tell us tell us about this, this scientific paper you had for us. Well, actually, I've changed tack. I've got something more interesting for you. Oh yeah, you, you've promised me that actually because the the paper. You, have you actually read that paper you sent me? Yeah, it's really good. It's very solid. It's good scientific information. Yes, I'm sure it is. And what was the what was it about? It was about the effects of GABA supplementation on um, people's quality of sleep. And, yep. and, and, yeah, and it, on, on neurotransmission. Yes, but, but the interesting thing was that, that before the paper was written, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't thought that gamma aminobutyric acid could pass the blood-brain barrier. Well, that's, uh, that was the case in point, wasn't it? So there was by the oral route. Yeah, there was yeah. a question as to whether it could interrupt the neurotransmission of the brain. Yeah, and it seems it that doesn't. it can. Well, it, it, apparently it doesn't, but I think probably there is placebo effect. However, this is your 60-second CPD coming up. There are some interesting effects on growth hormone excretion in humans. So anyway, yes, so they, uh, they looked at the excretion of growth hormone following exercise and found that the groups that were given GABA and protein as opposed to just protein had about 200 times peak of growth hormone supplementation or growth hormone excretion straight after strenuous exercise. Really? So there are, the argument is that it improves adaption to exercise. I, I thought you were asking us to read that paper so that we could take GABA so that by the time we were an hour and a half into the show, our neurotransmission would have slowed down. It doesn't make you that sleepy. And I then thought it might be interesting. Probably wouldn't, and then you'd look better <laughs> than we do. But anyway, I have more interesting thing for you, Ooh. which is my new finding. Of, excuse the use of the C word, porridge and carbohydrate. Right. Yeah. So I, I've been experimenting with lots and lots of porridge with a new book about cycling and food. The Cycling, cycling Chef. Yeah, it's a nice book. You did say I could do a book review, didn't you? Yeah. So it's, very, it's high quality, 200 and something pages, lots of nice recipes, nice pictures. pictures. Lovely pictures, yes, lots of pictures. Mm -hmm. All right, show us a picture. But some very nice porridge recipes and oats, which oats are good for you. So I looked at the science of oats because I thought Mike likes CPD. He wanted 60 seconds of science. So I thought, right, there's a whole page on. Sorry, Mike. Carbohydrates. <gasps> oh, carbohydrates. Oh, look at that. A, a whole page and, of two, 200 okay, old pages. Okay, clever clogs then. So so are you up for the 60-second CPD challenge then? I can try. So, Graham, you have agreed tonight <laughs> to do a 60-second CPD on your chosen subject, which is... Porridge. Porridge. Okay. Porridge. Let's get this ready then, shall we? Graham Meckford, 60 seconds CPD on porridge, starting now. Oh, it's working. Porridge. So, my middle age discovery is a healthy, happy, good for you breakfast, which is porridge. So, despite Mike's hatred of carbohydrates, porridge is really good for you. Nice, high carbohydrate content. So the reason that we use porridge for breakfast is it gets metabolism going, it gets you thicker, it gets you leaner, and it helps to improve body composition. The reason for that is it contains a huge amount of beta-glucan. The beta-glucan found in oats, uh, found in all oats in fact, great for breakfast, and it has been found to uh, 
contribute to lower carbohydrate uh, cholesterol and uh, LDL in blood and also found to stabilize appetite so you don't get hungry you don't eat crap throughout the day um, and that allows you to reduce body fat and also to provide you a nice stable carbohydrate level to allow exercise so I would recommend porridge I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one well no that was that was amazing that was actually quite astounding being put on the spot not being taught about 60 seconds CBD before tonight I can't and then it off one. again Graham. <laughs> oh no oh. It's, it's an ongoing problem this whole wow. mic, so, I've, I've switched it off there we go don't think it's hard actually we, we discovered porridge about three months ago and mm. I had it for breakfast every single day since then and it is a revelation it's great stuff so do you have it with uh, with salt or with sugar or with honey or nothing? I have it with uh, no added sugar, oat milk and some blueberries and some honey and some pumpkin seeds. Why don't you have it with eggs and bacon? That's a standard Eckford household recipe now for porridge in the mornings. Oh. And it, it's awesome. It's great. It's going can, to I, can I do a 60 second CPD on the history of porridge? Yes. <laughs> As long as it's not different, as long as it's not inflammatory to Scots people, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perhaps I'd better not do a 60 second CPD on porridge then. But, but it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, obviously, porridge is the national dish of, of Scotland, or at least closely uh, linked. So, why what, what is that? I think because it's because it's cheap and plentiful. Yeah, yes, indeed. So, so I, I, I have you. porridge maybe three times a year and love it, but I, I I couldn't have it more than that. I just you know if I have it once, then I love it. But if I were to have it the next day, it's kind of a bit bloaty and stodgy. It's a seasonal thing. You have porridge for six months of the year from probably September to March, and then from March through to the following September, you have overnight oats. Overnight oats? That sounds... Yeah, it's like cold, it's cold porridge, but the marketing department got a hold of it for a while. Overnight <laughs> <laughs> <I don't. laughs> Now, there's a, there's a great um, recipe with which involves porridge and whiskey, isn't there? Mm. Is that? And I can't remember... Does it begin with C... It's not your oh, Kronaken is uh, fresh uh, cream, fruit, and um, porridge oats. Yeah, that's the, that's and the whiskey. One. That's, the one. that's the Scottish national dessert. Crack. Great, really good. Mm. So, it's, it, no. so just like any other breakfast. Thing. Well, I, I sometimes like have it um, slightly altered. I often have it without without the porridge and the cream. So just the whiskey then. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, uh, uh, that's a bit like a good gin, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've noticed you're drinking the whiskey there. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you because you're not a great gin man, are you? So which one are you on? Oh, here we go. What have we got tonight? 50%, actually. So this is uh, an independently bottled Bacladi. Oh. <sighs> the, the Adventure, Adventure Filmmaker's Dram. So this is one I got from auction. And it's effectively a oh. Bacladi. It's 14 years old and it's a single cask sherry barrel. Auction. That's been bottled. Yeah, auction. What, you go to virtual whiskey auctions? Maybe. <laughs> well, we, so Netflix has. How is this hasn't... A, how is, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Time out. How is this ne a thing? Netflix hasn't reached Scotland yet. Well, obviously not, but what's all this? Virtual whiskey auctions. It's like internet dating. You see something you have to look off, you chuck some money at it and hope it arrives soon post. So, so hold on, what are the auction sites? What are the Right. What are the whiskey There's auction lots of auction sites? sites are available? Uh whiskey auctioneer is quite a good one, although others are available, including Whiskey Hammer and Scottish Whiskey what? Auctions. Wow. Although I, I don't endorse them and I'm not sponsored by them yet. They have some very good stuff. McCallan, 78-year-old, The Red Collection. Oh, yeah, that's too expensive. 59,000 59, no, no, 
go 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 the other end. So I'm I'm looking at a low price, lowest to highest. Re and I, I must not say, met. I'm looking at a pretty impressive black cock here um, for uh, for fifteen pound. Yeah, it's a miniature. I still I still think we should do a tasting night with some black cock. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> And that is why, that is why, in one comment, why Graham Eckford is <laughs> right up there and probably the most re <laughs> most downloaded episode of Veterinary Ramblings. I'll raise a glass of that one, Graham. Absolutely. We're currently the highest bidder for the Black Cock. <laughs> I'll let you know if you get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I went to um, the whiskey shop in uh, in Piccadilly a few years back, and they had this bottle there, which was diamond encrusted with gold twill in a, in a, a special um, specially designed counter with lights on it. And I said, "How, how much is that?" And he said, "Oh, that's a very special bottle." I said, "Well, it looks it." I mean, isn't it? These little gems, you know, the, the diamonds, they're real diamonds, and there's real gold twill. So, well, how much is it? He said it's five hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I said, what? For five hundred? How many bottles of that are there? It was the three. We have one at each of our main branches. I said, so, so if I, if I buy this, well, if I take out my wallet and say, here's here's just over half a million. Do you just give me the bottles in there? <laughs> no, no, sir, no. What we would do is we would arrange the uh, the bottle to be uh, taken to your house by limousine with a tasting bottle. I said, well, what's that? I said, well, this is a display bottle. There is the same whiskey in a tasting bottle. Uh, we would deliver the two to your house in a limousine with, with a with a whiskey taster who, who would talk you through a glass of the wine and uh, tell you about it and, uh, uh, and and then leave you with the tasting bottle and the presentation bottle. I said, well, can I not just buy the tasting bottle because that seems a bit cheaper because it hasn't got this diamond stuff on it, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, sir, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. I no, only no, 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 no. said, Fuck off! I'm not going to pay half a million pounds for that. That's as as much as I pay for my house, and, and, and then a bit so. And he said, "Well, yeah, I quite understand." And um, I said, "After all, I said, actually, you know, it might it might be worth it." I said, "I could I could consider taking a loan out on my business for it." And he thought I was being serious. And he said, "Shall I book you in?" I said, well, it's not possible to, to feel the bottle, is it? Yes, certainly, sir. Certainly. And he, he had to get someone else out. So that there was a, this, this you know, other guy working in the shop and the security guard had to come out to open this thing and hand me the bottle. And I looked at it and said, well, it, it certainly is a, a lovely one. It's a very beautiful bottle, sir. It's designed by you know, Cartier or very, very nice. I said, do you know, I, I could even sell one of my horses. And he said, do you know, I, I think whatever investment you made in it would be worthwhile. I said, yes, I could probably sell my children. And this sort of look of fear flicking across his eyes. And he realised I was completely bullshitting him. And this bottle disappeared from my hand without me ever noticing it had gone went back in and this huge brick of a guy said I think you want to leave now sir but £550,000 they were asking for this bottle ah uh, oh, so we haven't done the joke we haven't done the CPD certificate we did the one minute oh, oh, oh we haven't we've got, we got a joke we've got a CPD certificate okay. no. Yeah, and this is nothing to do with what we've talked about. Nothing at all, because we haven't already. So there we go. There's a bit of double vision there. I, I like the way you've um, spelled that as well. That's perfect. So certificate of liquor learning. This certifies that 
drinking responsibly. We has tasted some very good gins. And Gloria was sick in his transit on Monday. Uh, there we go. And and there's various bottles there, you know, white wine and a leffy beer and some sort of. Uh, well, that, now that's a cork. That's the least useful thing I've ever seen written on a cork. Can you see that? Open me. Yes. No, no, that's, so that's fighting, isn't it? That's, that's, you take that's... you take the foil off a bottle of wine, and you think, what do I do next? Oh, well, that's, I think that's useful. That's yeah. pure Alice in Wonderland. I mean, FFF. That's, Louis Car that's Lewis Carroll. He came from Scotland, didn't he? He did. He did. Uh, there's a Dalwini. I do like a Dalwini. There we go. So that's it. Let's do this quickly. Reflect on our CPD tonight. Yeah. Very relaxing. Good. I've, I've done yeah, that. you finished reflecting? Graham, did you reflect? I reflected. Good. Okay. Excellent. I've got a very quick joke. Go on then. I don't think I've done it before about these three um, uh, Southern, uh, Southern American women sitting on the on the stoop in the evening, and one says, "I calls my man Jack Daniels because he's every inch American, and he's hard as rock, and he's just rough and tough." And the other one says, "I calls my man." Southern comfort, because he, he comes from the south and he comforts me. And the other one says, I calls my man Dram Buey. And the other two. Oh, hang on a minute, isn't that some fancy liquor? That's the one. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> on that bombshell, on, on that, very much on that bombshell. Graham, thank you so much. For coming again tonight. It's nice to catch up with you guys again. We, we needed it tonight, mate. We did. We did. Very and there, and there may be people watching coming. this. We don't know. There may be if they're watching it or if they're listening it on, on, on podcast, on YouTube, on on, on Instagram, on Facebook. what else? Facebook. Then, guys, may your dog go with you. May your dog go with you. Sponge. And um, cut. <laughs> Let's go home to bed, shall we? An interesting point. Talking about quality of sleep and helping you get to sleep. I've been trying to listen to some podcasts before going to bed, and actually, I'm lucky if I get through the adverts at the beginning of the podcast before I'm flat out fast asleep. So, what more could you ask than playing the latest episode of Veterinary Ramblings whilst you're dozing off to sleep and have? I actually woke up last night with an earphone jammed in my ear because I'd forgotten to take it out before I got it passed out. I've done that. It's very painful, isn't it? Yeah, and I needed the wee too. It wasn't good. But that, <laughs> you know, just just think of the learning, the, the subliminal learning you would get from mm. listening to veterinary ramblings last thing at night. Yeah. I think if I woke up in the middle of the night to hear your voice, Mike, I'd be quite worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're drifting off to sleep and... Can you taste licorice? <laughs>